repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, who sent your Holy Spirit to be the light and life of your church, open our hearts to the riches of your grace, that we may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in love and joy and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from land, but the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came, walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, it's a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And he said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. It is I. It's me. Whether you're big or little, old or young, when you're in a frightening place, they're just the words you need to hear. And I'm sure you can go back to childhood and think of an example or even adulthood. No need for a name. It's a person. It's a voice you trust, and that's enough. There used to be a song way back in my day, people need people. Now you're not allowed to burst out in songs, so, you know, just sing it in your head. And for the quiz buffs, Barbara Streisand, funny girl, the 60s, you know, of course none of you go back that far. But we've really discovered the importance of people needing people, the importance of having people around in the last few months, and particularly when they're not, if you like, by their absence. 
And we've learned to value our most precious relationships, which are with the people we trust, whether that's spouses, family, or friends. We've made new friends of our neighbors, those I know I've spoke, talked to the neighbor opposite when I've seen them out walking um, by shouting across the road in a way that I've just said hello when we brush past in the street. It's most, most strange. But in our gospel reading this morning, the disciples had had one heck of a fright. Conditions on the Sea of Galilee can be unpredictable at any time. But that's no problem. They were fishermen. They were used to it, not wimps. They knew what they were doing. But the storm is so relentless that they're fighting with the waves all night and things are not looking good. Yes, even fishermen have disasters. They were still in the middle of the lake and not making much headway at all when they see Jesus walking towards them across the water. Must be in a worse state than they thought. Must be hallucinating. Must be a ghost. They shriek in fear. What does Jesus say? Take heart, it is I. It's okay, it's me. Just what they needed to hear. Yes, all of us can remember at least one incident as a child when those words made everything all right. It's okay, it's me. It's going to be all right. And you believed it. And you relaxed. And you could live life again. Lots of people have been longing to hear those words through this pandemic. NHS staff, hospital patients, actually all of us. As lockdown eased, it started to feel like things were going to be all right after all. And then new outbreaks, Leicester, Oldham, Manchester, Preston, Aberdeen. Oh, perhaps it isn't going to be all right after all. I think we've all been there. It is I. What happens next in the story? Peter jumps up after those words. If it really is you, command me to come to you on the water. Now, command sounds a bit formal, but translations of some words are difficult. Other translations use bid me come or tell me to come. But the general gist is that Peter trusts Jesus and what Jesus tells him to do will be okay. It won't be false news, it'll be the right thing to do. Jesus answers, come. One word, that's enough for Peter. He sets off walking across the water to Jesus. I do wonder what the others were thinking in the boat. This is madness. Oh, typical Peter. But I think their anxiety levels must have shot up as he jumped out the boat to start walking on water. Nevertheless, Peter sets off. Lots is often made of the fact that Peter takes his eyes off Jesus and sees the big storm, route, storm waves around him. I think that was a real oh, sugar moment. He panics and starts to sink. What were they saying in the boat then? Oh, Peter can be an idiot. What a stupid thing to do. Why does he always get carried away in the heat of the moment? Peter has what I call a real Peter panic. He yells, save me! Jesus reaches out a hand and saves him. They get back in the boat and the storm subsides. Times like now, we're asked to have faith in God, to trust Jesus, do we? Can we? Is it a bit like Peter, where in the, some moments we can and we set off faithful and then whoa, the storms are big. I suppose we can have faith a lot of the time, but that we also have Peter panic moments. Let's be honest, it was easier for the disciples with a flesh and blood person in the middle of them, 
who look like them, ate and talk like them, wasn't an invisible God that we're asked to trust, was a flesh and blood person, could see them, touch them. In frightening times like now, we all need a flesh and blood person to trust, and it can be difficult to know who they are amid politicians, scientists, journalists, all spouting different stuff. It's as though we're all looking around for that person who'll give us the right advice, who will save us, save everybody, stop this pandemic. Well, I pray you all do. Firstly, have a flesh and blood person close at hand who you trust and through whom God brings you the reassurance you need. Treasure them. Thank God for them. Come and find one of us if you haven't got one of them. And I pray too that we'll all have the faith to trust the one we cannot see in the same way the disciples could, but we truly know, knows that he can thus be with each one of us at the same time. He knows our every fear and he says to each of us, it is I, it's me, it's okay. Come. And if we come to him, he can be relied on to save us. Thanks be to him, our God and Saviour, who is totally trustworthy, always available, always with us, even when we have Peter panic moments. Let us affirm our faith in God. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray to the God who loves us, knows us, knows our needs, and provides for us always. Blessed are you, our God, for you have created us all out of love and for your love. Even when our sin and foolishness, we go against you and leave you, you are there and seek us out in love. May your church throughout the world bless all who seek and heal division and to do away with prejudice. Give courage to all who reach out to those in need 
and who seek to welcome rejected. We pray especially for Skegness Emergency Shelter, for homeless people and the staff who strive to support and rehabilitate. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we ask forgiveness for the sin and arrogance that divides us and creates barriers between nations and people. We pray with love for all the minority groups, for those who are judged by their race, colour or history. We remember all who are refugees and outcast of society. We ask your blessings upon those who work with fair trade and justice in our world. We bring to you all who are used as slaves and labour, and for those who do not get a fair day's wage for their work. We remember especially those who will go hungry today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Giving God, we give thanks for our families. We ask blessings upon our homes and loved ones, family, friends and neighbours, together with the surrounding towns and villages. Be present, Lord, in the homes of all and fill them with love and laughter, peace and joy. <clears throat> May they be places of warmth and welcome. We remember for, before you, Lord, homes where there is division and distress, distress, poverty and neglect. Help us to be aware of each other's needs and the needs of those who are less fortunate. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Healing God, we thank you for your love and compassion for all who suffer in body, mind and spirit. We pray especially for the 150 lives lost and the 5,000 injured in the port explosion in Beirut in the Lebanon. We pray that your healing presence will calm the fears, ease their pain, and bring light into their darkness. Lord, we remember those who are frail with age and all who are vulnerable. Pour your living strength into their lives and protect them from all that is harmful. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mighty God, bring comfort to those grieving loved ones who have died. Bring peace to those worried, fearful, and uncertain of the future. We pray for government and authorities who are de developing new strategies to contain and deal with the COVID-19 pandemic. Help us, help us to be responsible in the things we do in our lives to prevent the spread of the virus by taking hold of the recommended precautions and avoiding situations which make things worse. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, whose promise stands sure forever, we thank you for being patient with us and your refusal to give up on us. Merciful Father, accept the prayer for the sake of your son. Amen. <laughs> Please stand for the peace if you're able. Peter cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's share the peace in whatever way is appropriate. And now we sing or hum again, just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. Thank you. 
Wise and gracious God, you spread a table before us. Nourish your people with the word of life and the bread of heaven. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you, with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, 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 God of power and light, heaven and earth are full of you. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Hosanna in the hearts. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends. And taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended. He took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy shall be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with Wilfred and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All honor and glory are yours, O loving Father, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. There we are. We are one body because we all share in one Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. body of Christ broken for us all. Thank you. 
Holy Father, who gathered us here around the table of your son to share this meal with the whole household of God, in that new world where you reveal the fullness of your peace, gather people of every race and language to share in the eternal banquet of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your son Jesus Christ. Here we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Final hymn, lead us, Heavenly Father, lead us of the world's tempestuous sea. transform us. May the gentleness of your spirit lead us. May the gifts of your spirit equip us to serve and worship you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, 
be with you and with all those who hear them, this day and always. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.